Once more, this is Dr. Zo. Welcome back to the Powerhouse Healing and Deliverance Telecast. We want to continue our teaching on altars. Uh, here, I want us to look at examples and how to raise up an altar and why altar is very necessary. Because if you don't raise up an altar, it will truncate destiny. You will never reach your full potential and you will never never ever reach the height God wants you in terms of plans and purpose and fulfillment of God ordained glorious destiny because we are here to fulfill destiny actually after all said and done because life is a journey it's a journey of discovery when you discover you uncover to recover and this is why we want to examine author here we want to examine the destiny of somewhere incidentally we read about somewhere before and why author is very very necessary here we know the story of someone and an amazing thing happened in his life the, you know before someone was born the mother was told that she can't conceive a baby in fact she was so desperate that he told the husband that look hey, I gotta have a baby. She kept on crying, and the husband kept on saying, hey, Kenna, he said, am I not greater than seven sons? But Hannah didn't want to hear none of those. In fact, theologians told her that she was barren for at least 28 years. And in this year, every year she was going to Shiloh, the house of the Lord, until she made a dedication to God. See, unresolved issues of foundation and altars, we call it family patterns, evil dedication, trends, and cycles. If you don't break it through altar, you keep on praying, you keep on going for deliverance, you keep on doing self-deliverance. This is where you need help. This is where you need agreement. This is where you need a deliverance prophet. And thank God, Eli was there, even though she was doing her prayer at the altar of the Lord in Shiloh, Eli confirmed her prayer, even though Eli didn't know what she was doing because she was as if she was praying in tongue in those days, even there was no um, Holy Ghost baptism. But the scripture described her that her mouth was moving, but nobody was hearing what she was saying. And that was why the prophet, or rather the priest of the house, the high priest, Eli, thought that she was drunk and told her to put away her drinking bottles. And she said, no, man of God, I'm not drunk. I'm a woman with a heart pain. I'm a woman with a burden. And then she told Eli her plight and everything she was going through, basically her God story, her journey. And then Eli said, well, go home and let the God of Israel be with you. Amazingly, the Bible says she went home and sorrow, sorroweth no more. In other words, by faith, she believed God. She was desperate. In fact, a lot of times people say, I'm not desperate. Well, in God, if you are not desperate, you won't get answers because God does not reveal himself to casual seekers. He doesn't reveal to himself to people who are not serious with him because God is a serial God. God is real. But before then, I want to see what Hannah said that brought her breakthrough. That was the turning point in her case because for 28 years she had labored both in prayer complaining fighting her co-wife penina but nothing happened until she, she made this dedication at the altar and she says something that is amazing the king james is kind of woolly about this not very clear but when she was making her vow her pledge when she was dedicating herself before someone was born she said something amazing she said as long as someone lives that he will be borrowed unto the lord and now if he corrected that which is a more powerful keyword so as long as he lives he will be dedicated to the lord now this woman was looking for a male child she was very specific in her prayer but god was interested in a prophet a replacement prophet priest for a lie a replacement for a lie and his lineage evil lineage because god has already judged a lie but god wanted a replacement no sooner that Hannah made that promise. God stamped it. Now, Samuel cannot become a doctor. Samuel could not become an engineer if he wanted to. Samuel could not become an architect or an accountant. You see why author control destiny? 
before someone was even born, her dest his destiny rather is already decided. By who? The mother. Because the meaning somewhere means prayer. I ask him of the Lord. And thank God this is a supreme altar. This is the greatest altar. Because altar is not a demonic thing. It's not a spiritual thing. Altar is a God thing. The devil did not find anything worthy. It's God that originated the idea of altars. So if you are praying and fasting and you don't understand altar deliverance, which is delivered by sacrifice, and that the power of the altar is the strength of the sacrifice, you won't go far. See, this is really what happened to someone. This is not an Old Testament thing. It's not an, a New Testament thing. When the mother dedicated him to God, God answered that prayer. But it depends on Hannah to fulfill her own part of the bargain, which she did. Now, as long as Samuel lived, Samuel served God. Samuel was not just a priest, he was a prophet, he was a kingmaker, he was a judge of Israel. Because I discovered that most of these children that are promised children are actually special, privileged, dedicated children child of promise and that's what Samuel is now could you imagine Samuel being dedicated to an evil altar or contrary altar do you know Samuel would have been done he would have been going from one deliverance to the other one pastor to the other one church to the other he would have been praying and fasting he would have been sowing seed and nothing happened because the root of the problem was that the mother dedicated her to God and her destiny was already decided this is what happened to a lot of Christians. The, before their mom gave birth to them, they visited some native doctors of Babalao or Santeria or Sangoma or voodoo priests. And their destiny was already even decided before they were born or before their mother even married into that family because of what their father did with the enemy or with the camp of the enemy. Some people even belong to evil uh, society and societies. And when you do that, the devil is a generational devil. Just like God is a generational God. When you dedicate somebody to the enemy, the enemy makes sure he covers the family covers the future generation, covers the children, covers the offspring, including the children and great-grandchildren, because demonic protection is demonic possession. It doesn't matter if you went there for procreation, people looking for the fruit of the womb, or for success, or for pro uh, uh, provisions, or to get a male child, you know, a, 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 like in Africa, it happens a whole lot. People, if they don't get a male child, they keep on giving birth until, you know, chances are that they will get a male baby that will carry the family name and family legacy. So what happened is that if you notice, for any reason, why people went to the native doctor or voodoo priest or any of the fetish priests, once people go there and they make mark on their body, Already the demon doesn't regard anything as little. He will possess the people. Even if in that generation, the enemy will remember it. Now look at what happened to Samuel. And not only that, let's look at Gideon. Now that we are right there in Judges 6. Judges 6 says, And there came an angel. I'm reading verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, oak which was in Ophrah that pertained unto Joash, the Bezerite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat, wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Wow. 13. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all all this befalling us and where be all his miracle which our father has told us of let's pause here a little bit if you're a child of god if you've been wondering where is my breakthrough where is my miracle where is my turnaround where is the victory that jesus bled and died for then you are dealing with an altar you are not dealing with a small demon. You are not dealing with familiar spirit. You are not dealing with imps. 
they are not dealing with witchcraft spirit you are dealing with something worse than witchcraft you are dealing with an occultic personality you are dealing with father powers from your father's house or your mother's background you know fighting you by household wickedness or domestic witchcraft in fact they are saying the demon have a human face especially if there is delay and stagnation and disappointment and dejection and lateness in everything non-achievement is because there is a family force evil force background force fighting your destiny blocking your destiny most often it comes in dreams you see it in your dream if you are you know in a dream and you are in a traffic jam or you are running as if somebody is trying to pull you back or somebody fighting you in the dream or somebody hindering you or somebody you know coming to you to fight you or being naked in the dream stuff like that shows that you are fighting an altar and that thing is that if things are missing if there is delay in everything you do or you're accident prone or you hear strange noises or things disappear in the house you are dealing with an altar or you see yourself driving in a fog or losing your car or somebody stealing your purse or stealing your bag or you going coming to a bank the bank door shuts you are dealing with an altar the altar is against your finances the altar is against your even sometimes it happened like marital disharmony because every altar who want to be married to sons and daughters of that family and then they cause trouble they say they are protecting them but why they are protecting them from bad things they are also protecting them from good things and graces or blessings or breakthrough or victory that Jesus bled and died for that is meant for them now Gideon thought his problem was the Midianites he thought the problem was the oppression he was actually threshing wheat at wine press I don't know if you notice what happened you trash wheat in an open field. You don't hide into a corner like wine press. You know, wine press is where you squeeze the grapes, the engine or the machine that squeezes the grapes and make wine off of it. So he is not supposed to be there to trash the wheat. Threshing wheat is a, a fancy name for, you know, separating the wheat chaff from the substance or wheat canals and you do it in open field whereby the air or the breeze or the wind will take away the chaff and the real wheat will settle down so this is what happened but instead of doing it that because of fear of the medianites of the marauders of the devourers of the menace of these foreign invaders and enemies of progress gideon has to hide to do it you know in a shady area in the bush where they're supposed to press wine from the grapes that's wine press now he was hiding when this angel of the lord met him and it's true in verse 13 it changes from talking about angel of the lord to not talk about the lord look at 14 14 say and the lord looked upon him and said go in this thy might and thou shalt save israel from the hand of the Midianites have not I sent thee wow but you would have thought that God who has given him mandate who has given Gideon a ministry who has given Gideon a church who has called Gideon who want to use Gideon you thought that God would have just released him like that let's see what God did because God will not point him to his problem to the root cause of his problem you know look at what god did in verse 14 for the sake of time child of god he says then gideon built an altar dear unto the lord and called it jehovah shalom unto this day 25 and it came to pass the same night that the lord said unto him take thy father's young bullock even the second bullock of seven years old and throw down the altar of baal that thy father hath and cut down the groove that is by it wow already you discover that he didn't even do anything but to build an altar his own altar as if that is not enough god came that night because here the person that called him is actually jesus we call it pre-incarnate christ pre 
incarnate manifestation of deity. In other words, before Jesus came in human flesh, he was existent in the spirit realm. We, sometimes we call it Christophany. So this person is actually Jesus Christ that appeared to Gideon and told him, instructed him because he's the Lord of hosts, he's the Lord of the captain of the uh, host of the lost army, instructed Gideon back to his father's house back to his foundation, back to his background, back to his household. The problem was this Baal, an altar. The problem was this demigod. The problem was this idol. The problem was this strange evil power that was binding Gideon down. Yet Gideon had a very glorious call. He was born great. He was tied down. He was given a great ministry. He was anointed. He was empowered. He was equipped. God gave him everything to empower him, to equip him, to prepare him and present him for his calling so that he would be effective. But look at the altar. Altar hindered him. This is the solution because God deals with every problem from the root. Look at what Gideon did. 26. And build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in the other place and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the groove which that shall cut down. Wow. So God now instructed him to destroy the altar of evil. Destroy the altar of the enemy. Destroy the altar of Baal. Baal is this God that was imported from the Phoenicians. In fact, it was so popular during the time of Jezebel, but he's been there. A, you know, as bad as it is. Because every battle, every spiritual warfare truly is a battle of altars. And the is it the supreme author of God and is it the author of evil or the author of the enemy? They militate against this knees. Author versus author. Now, look at what God did here. After he instructed Gideon and Gideon obeyed and everything, did you know that the people started fighting Gideon until the father said no? If Baal is God, let him contend for himself. If Baal is a real God, don't kill my son. Let Baal contend for himself. In fact, they even called Gideon Jerubabel. This is what happened. Whenever you destroy altar, the altar will come back to haunt you. It's called backlash. It's called counterattack. But be ready. The blood of Jesus Christ is much more than powerful. It's much more than enough. It, it, it can tackle everything. But you have to also put your own sacrifice down. You have to also know how to raise up an altar for the Lord so that you can counteract any other evil altar or evil cry or family idol or any evil program or evil projection. If you don't have an altar set up and you are just praying and you are just fasting and you are just going to, for deliverance. Yes, going to deliverance is good from a deliverance prophet. But you have to know how to raise up altar to maintain the deliverance so that you can achieve success and actually have unprecedented breakthrough. What you need really is not deliverance per se. You want your progress. You want your increase. You want your overflow. You want your miracle. You want to see signs, wonders, and breakthrough. You want your turnaround. You want expansion in all area. You want supernatural abundance and prosperity. That's what you want. And that is why deliverance by sacrifice, utter deliverance is very, very powerful. Because God is a spirit, graces and gifts in, and then favor will begin to come to fight for you. God himself will fight for you. Angelic majesty is released. Angelic warriors are released on your behalf to fight for you because you have actually given God something to fight with. Because if you don't place something at the altar based on what Jesus Christ has done on the cross of Calvary, you still have to fight your own battle. It's altar versus altar. So the altar that has more sacrifice, the altar that has more firepower in terms of sacrifice wins. So Gideon here now offered God everything at the altar and God showcased him God prevailed God now if we read further about Gideon we discover how this interaction how this altar helped Gideon to even win battle with 300 people and he won a, a, a battle of three kings that joined together to fight Israel God bless you this is Dr. Ozo make sure you subscribe to our channel talk to you we'll continue this series next time bye bye